Hey, what's up? Welcome to the workshop, and I'll take you inside and show you every little dusty nook and cranny. Yeah? Come in. Come in. I'm not leaving the camera right here, is it? I think it's a dodgy area. <laughs> <laughs> I joke, it is actually a lovely area, even though we've only been here for two years, our neighbours have been absolutely brilliant with making the workshop here and making all the noise. We've even had orders from them, which is amazing. But the workshop, now, the first thing I'm gonna say is the size, because I know for a fact that's what you're all thinking. It is just over 19 foot long by nine foot five inches wide. Um, and yeah, you'll see here in the pictures, it never used to look like this. So I'm gonna tell you all about that now. So it actually took about six months after we moved in to get it to this point, mainly because it was the height of the pandemic. We moved in at the end of March 2020, and the day after, the government said no more moving. So we got here on the nick of time. The reason it took that long is because it was so difficult to get hold of any materials anywhere. Stud work, plasterboarding, insulation, insulation tape, plaster itself. It was just really difficult to get a hold of it. The garage also needed electrics put in. We've actually recently, about four months ago, put a radiator in here as we were doing some internal work and moving a radiator inside. Our living room is on the other side of this wall that's behind you. Yeah, it's behind you. <laughs> now. I'd like to say that I filmed the entire build process, but I didn't. But if you go over and follow me on Instagram, if you're not already, you'll find a little highlights thing that I'll put up here somewhere. That's under as Reno, I believe, and it's you'll find all the info and all the stages that I did to get it up to this point. So, without further ado, let's just get on with the tour. We might as well start off at the workbench. <laughs> I put that noise in because, well, I'm not proud of the workbench. <laughs> but it is a workbench and it is doing the job. It doesn't really fit the space very well, mainly because it's from a previous workshop. Uh, this workshop we're in right now is currently workshop four out of the 14 years that I've been doing woodworking. But it does store a decent amount of stuff. Now you can see at the back there, I've got my air compressor. And then in front of that, I've got my Triton belt and spindle sander. That comes in real handy. And then if you scoot round to the front, you'll find an empty Makita trim router box. <laughs> and then some sanding discs in those boxes, and then some random scraps of wood. And then right behind these uh, glue bottles of Type 1 3, you'll find my Makita track saw. And then above all that, on the left-hand side of the workbench, you'll find my vise. I would always recommend having one in the workshop. It always gets used, and this is fairly cheap. It, I think I got it from Amazon somewhere, but I'll put a link if I can find it, or on my Amazon store. To the right of the workbench, I've got two drawers. And this one's actually not badly organized. I've got a few biscuits for my biscuit jointer in there, pens, paint scraper, uh, some dowels in there as well. So random bits and bobs. But the one below it, oh, that just makes me sick looking at that. <laughs> All my drawers in the workshop need to be sorted out. In fact, rebuilt and reorganized. But we'll let a few just don't worry about that, eh? To the left, to the left of the workbench. I keep my sustainers for my festival bits, like my Domino XL, a sustainer for all the dominoes themselves of all random assortments of sizes. And then another empty box that this sander is supposed to live in, but it doesn't, it lives elsewhere, which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit. I also have a big roll of craft paper, which I sometimes use for glue ups, but mainly for putting finishes on. And then I've got my air hose reel thingamajiggy. I've moved this twice. I've still not settled upon a good place for it yet. It did used to live up there where you can see the holes, uh, but for now it just lives there. Now onto my French cleat tool wall. It's, this was one of the first things I built in the workshop and I'm so glad I did. I'd always wanted one. It's changed so many times, it's so modular. But as you can see, I've got all my clamps up there. Well, actually not all of my clamps, my smaller clamps. And then a few of my smaller cordless and corded power tools. And some of my Japanese pull saws, you can see on the bottom right there, some screwdrivers, then some small clamps. You know, it's all there. And then on the ceiling, I've got my record power air filter. Now this is a machine that's always overlooked in a workshop and I would highly recommend getting one. What I would also recommend is actually getting a plug here on the ceiling. When we got the electrics done in the workshop, I made sure we had that fitted because I knew this was going to be going up here. And welcome to the saddest corner of the workshop. <laughs> oh, I'm having fun doing this voiceover. Yeah, so this is basically where the shop vac gets thrown. 
along with some other jigs and bits and bobs. And as you can see, that's where my sander lives. The Festool ETS-155, I think it's called. That's basically where it lives, usually attached to the hose. I do need to find a better home for it, but that's where it lives for now. Now on to the most used machine in the shop, I guess anyone's shop to be fair, is the table saw. This is the Axminster AT254 LTS table saw. There is a bigger brother version to this, but for nearly a thousand pounds extra, I could not afford it. It's absolutely brilliant. Cast iron top, uh, cast iron handles as well. And yeah, it's just wicked. There is one reason why I did get this machine and it's because you can insert a dado stack, which I also got from Axminster. That in the UK is an absolute game changer. Moving on to my crosscut table saw sled. I absolutely love this thing. It gets used on every single project. I attach the Craig Jig uh, T-Track thing that you can see at the back there, the blue thing. And then some standard T-Tracks with some hold downs. You can see me like faffing about with them here. Simple, really easy. And it comfortably lives up there. There we are. Um, so down below there, we've got two other jigs. Uh, that big long one made of MDF. I'll tell you what that is later, but this thing it's another table saw jig and those grooves are all dovetails and these, I guess, dovetail clamps slide into those grooves. And then once it's on the table, you can then clamp your pieces down that you need to cut using the clamps. For this jig, I tend to use it for making tapers or making legs of multiples if you need to make the same thing over and over again. But if you don't have a surface planer or a joiner, you can actually use it to joint your pieces so you can get a nice tight glue up. If you want me to do a video on this, on how to make it, then just let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Now moving to the front right corner of the workshop and this is currently where the bandsaw is. It's the Axminster AT2552B. It has a cut height of 200 mil and then a cut width of 340 mil, I believe. Now I have a fair few of my machines on wheels, but I think this is the only one that I actually really, really move. And that's obviously only when I need to cut longer material, which isn't too often, but it's often enough. And then to the right of the bandsaw, I've just got a bucket for offcuts, some upright storage of materials, and then I've got my track saws for my track saw. I mean, what else the track saw's gonna be, gonna be for, eh? Again, not much in this corner though. This is the front left corner, and I've got some slabs there, some walnut slabs. I've got some rough saw walnut as well. But then I've also got another jig. I've got jigs coming out of my ears in this workshop, but that is a flattening jig, but I'll go into that another time in another video. <laughs> Now I'm gonna say it, but I think this is my most favorite machine in the shop. It's the Axminster Surface Planer. It's the AT150SSP. It's got the spiral head cutters on it, which honestly makes such a difference. I love it and it's positioned here because then if I have longer pieces, they can go straight out the garage door. And right behind my favorite machine in the shop is the radiator. It's literally the only place we could have put it, but it works and it's brilliant. And right above that is our lumber storage, which we've just replenished because we've got some orders about to begin. And this little section tends to get crowded. <laughs> off cuts tend to get dumped here. Uh, but yeah, that's basically where a lot of my slabs are and any off cuts, they just sit there. But behind there, you can probably see, is the drill press. I can't remember the model number of it, but it is a Draper brand and it's served me for many years and I absolutely love it. Can't really fault it, it drills things. <laughs> uh, but about a year ago, I built the drill press stand. This is purely for storage because obviously in a small shop you need the storage. Top drawer, I've just got some bench cookies, some chisels, Bessie accessories and some Craig screws. Second drawer, a load of sanding belts that I don't even use anymore. And then we all have one, a drawer that we store all our potentially useful but probably useless offcuts. So the Microsoft Station, again, a previous workshop build and I hate it. <laughs> Basically, the drawers are either too shallow or too deep and I just can't organize anything in them. I need to redo this entire thing. It, this whole entire part of the workshop really annoys me, but one day I'll make a new one. So the miter saw itself, this is the Bosch GCM12 GDL, and it's actually not a bad miter saw. It has a really decent cutting capacity, but there was a main reason why I got this particular machine. The distance between the fence and the back of the miter saw is so small that in a small shop, it makes such a difference, but the dust extraction is pants. <laughs> but funnily enough, since filming this video, I've actually said goodbye to the miter saw. I've decided to go miter sawless in the workshop. So goodbye, au revoir, and I'll, <laughs> I'll see how I get on with that one. Below the miter saw, I had two cubby holes. One was purely for the dust extraction for the miter saw, but now that's obsolete. There is another one where I store my thicknesser, which I think some of you might call planer. 
It doesn't take long at all to set up and personally I quite like having the two separate machines. So that jig that I mentioned earlier, this is what it's for. It's the extension bed for my thicknesser or some of you might call planer. And all I do is attach the table saw hose straight into the thicknesser and hey presto, I'm ready to go. And then a little bit of reverse movie magic and it's back in its home. Simple as that. Above the not so Midasaur station station is these cupboards that I've built purposely for this workshop. And my easily reachable 300mm woodpecker square. And in this cupboard, I have all my finishing stuff. Plus a few other bits and bobs that I have nowhere else to put. And if you didn't know, I am a massive Rubio Monocoat fan. I am an ambassador to them as well, but regardless for that, I love their products. This particular cupboard, I have all my glues, adhesives, and some random paints that I don't even use. All these stuff for mixing all the finishes as well. And in this final cupboard, I've got some sanding bits, Craig jig bits, PPE, drill bits, router bits, loads of bits and bobs. Above all that, I've got my half inch router, biscuit jointer, an empty box of screws, and then my angle grinder. Going down the wall, I've got some of my measuring equipment. Uh, some squares, rulers, angle gauges, some more squares, tape measure, the Craig jig measuring thing, and then I've got my charging station full of loads of bits and bobs. I won't bore you with going through all of it because I think it's quite self-explanatory. But right on the other side of that, this is where I house my dust extractor and collector. Now I know you can't see it, but it is a SIP 01954 three horsepower dust collector. I installed this little automatic switch to get it going and it works an absolute treat. Especially as all my machines that are hooked up to the extractor are over here in this side of the workshop. The ducting goes right over the tool wall, down the back of the bandsaw, which is hooked to, and the table saw, and I've got some wicked blast gates, which make a massive difference. And then continuing on, up over the garage doors to the surface planer, and then it ends right here where I may want to continue it on. And then right back to the clamp rack. This is one of the first things alongside the tool wall that I built for the workshop. It works an absolute treat, especially being so close to the workbench, as when I'm doing glue ups, I can easily just pick them off the rack and fish bash bosh, clamping is done. I have some Axminster and Bessie parallel clamps and some quick grip Irwin clamps and then some sash clamps as well. And this is my sticker wall, I must admit, I am terrible at giving out stickers, but if you can spot yourself, give me a little heads up down in the comments below. There we are, there we have it, the first ever Monkey Boys Workshop Tour. Thanks for watching, if you liked it, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, as I'm gonna be putting out videos as often as I can whilst I'm making furniture for clients, commissions, projects, home projects, all that lot. Also, if you can, hit the notification bell, then you'll obviously be notified when I put up a new video. If you have any questions about what you've just seen in the workshop, just put a comment down below and I'll get back to you, or hit me up over on Instagram, slip into my DMs, and I'll get back to you over there with anything that you might wanna know. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you later in the next one. So, peace out. Peace out? I've never said peace out in my life. I can't get away with peace out. Bye. <laughs> and the day after the government said no more moving, move me, move me. <laughs> try and get back either, or other than that guys, <coughs> but that resulted in really low, it was really difficult to get heart, it had all just gone, not that you're here because you're right now, you're a camera, <laughs> but that, um, up to this point. Yeah. <laughs>